Before I start today's video, I just want to give a quick thank you to Gaomon for sending me this cool pen display tablet. I don't have a lot of experience using display tablets, so I figured it would be cool to test this one out. So this is the Gaomon Pen Display PD1161 and it comes nicely packaged. So the tablet itself is very lightweight and thin and it measures about 11 to maybe 12 inches long. So it's actually very easy to transport. The display also has a few different options. You can change like brightness, sharpness and other settings. The display is 1920 by 1080. The tablet itself works pretty well. I did have to calibrate the screen for the first time use, uh, just because I found that the uh, it wasn't perfectly calibrated. After doing that though, using the tablet was really fun actually. One thing I really like about this tablet is that after about an hour or so of use, uh, the screen itself did not get too warm or it, did, it didn't really overheat. Uh, this is something that I have experienced uh, with other tablets uh, before where they just get too warm and it just makes it a little bit uncomfortable to use. Overall, I think this is a pretty good starter uh, display tablet for anyone who hasn't used one before or if you're not looking to break the bank uh, just to get one. So if you want to check this one out, I'll leave a link in the video description. Once again, thank you to Gaomon for sending me this tablet. Alright, let's get back to our scheduled programming already in progress. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3DX. In this video, I'm going to be creating a stylized uh, set of eggs, or alien eggs, or spider eggs, whichever you want to go with. So let's go ahead and get started. So, in this video, I'm going to start out by using ZBrush first. And the reason for that is because I think this is a good uh, example of how to start with ZBrush and just take this back into Maya. And also because I think it's going to be a lot easier to create in ZBrush. So as you saw there, I created the egg shapes and uh, obviously the spheres. And then I duplicated um, the larger egg sphere and uh, I scaled it down a little bit. And now I'm using the uh, clay buildup to just kind of draw in the, uh, I guess the webs or webbing that connects the eggs together basically and I find that this is a good technique for adding details on top of another shape without having to do it in on the original so like I said I duplicated the sphere I scaled it down slightly so that it was under the main egg and then um, I'm using the I used the uh, clay buildup to kind of build up those shapes and so that they come out on top of the original shape and that way I can just make those changes to that instead of actually messing up with the original shape of the egg. And I'm essentially going to do the same thing for all the other ones as well. Just kind of build it up the same way by duplicating the original sphere and then just using the clay buildup. And this means that the other shape is a, a different sub tool. So you can do whatever you want to it, uh, independent from the original uh, shape of the egg. So it's just a mix of play buildup, also with the uh, dynamesh as well, so that I can um, change the resolution as I go. And then finally, I use the uh, clay polish just so that the, the shapes are uh, smooth. I'm also going to add a plane here just to make sure that uh, the bottom actually uh, touches the ground. So it just gives, makes it a lot easier to see how this touches the ground and how it actually, you know, it's connected to the floor. Now I'm just going to add more kind of veins here with the clay buildup again. Just adding a few more details. And I'm going to continue to add some uh, details to the egg itself just by using the trim dynamic so that it's not slight. Uh, exactly flat or smooth I should say and then everything else is just pretty much adding a few more details just kind of sculpting it smoothing it out a little bit as well and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge all the uh, uh, the uh, webbing part here so that it's one mesh 
In this way I can just add more details and just kind of connect them a little bit better. Because before they were obviously separate pieces, but now they just look a little bit more connected to each other. And finally, I'm just going to add a few more details by using the damn standard, just adding some creases. Just trying to make it a little bit more interesting. Obviously now it's just looking like an alien exact, so I don't think I would be able to call this a spider exact, so let's just call it an alien one. And finally I'm just going to smooth out some of the edges here so it doesn't look like uh, the car edges, it looks more soft. So just smoothing out some of the shapes. And one thing I want to do is I just want to uh, give it different uh, color to the different shapes so that I can use this as ID maps in the Substance Painter. So this is going to be my high poly and I export that as my high poly model. I also duplicated the original and merged that all together so that I can get my low poly model. And I also got rid of the bottom half just so that it's uh, completely flat at the bottom. And I uh, used Dynamesh and uh, I also used Zebra Mesher here just to get my low poly model. The reason I went with Zebra Mesher in this one instead of Dynamesh is so that uh, just in case you know you want to animate this somehow, um, uh, the topology is a little bit easier to work with because you have mostly quads and not uh, a bunch of triangles, which can be a little bit more difficult to work with when you are animating something. Uh, the one thing with zero measure here is that it didn't completely give me uh, the geo that I needed, so there were a few spots where I just kind of changed the uh, edge flow um, so that it worked a little bit better. And also cleaned it up a little bit, especially usually at the bottom of a mesh, that's where the theory measure kind of gets a little bit uh, messed up. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean up the geo. I'm not going to go, um, just because I don't want to keep this video too long, I'm not going to fully, you know, lower the topology and clean it up. So I'm going to keep it relatively high for this video, but I highly recommend if you are following along or making something like this, I recommend that you actually do clean it up more. Uh, because it's a little bit high poly right now for what this is, even if it was animated. There's certainly a lot of geo that can be removed. So that's the one thing I would recommend if you are following this. This video is to make sure you clean up the geo once you're done here with your zero mesh model. And also lower the topology because it's a little bit too high for this, I think. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I used the model somewhat high poly, like I mentioned, I'll make sure you lower that, but I went ahead and uh, created the UVs for it, which for the most part in this case was just kind of looking for areas where I thought uh, would be good to have some cuts. And making sure that there is not a lot of distortion. So as you can see, there is a little bit of distortion at the top, but I think in this case, it should work fine for something like this. There will always be a little bit of distortion, but you just have to make sure that there's not a lot of it. All right, and in Substance Painter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bake my high poly model details onto the low poly. And also bake the ID map, because I want to use that for uh, so that I can change the colors for different sections of the model. And I'm using the 3DX stylized material, there's going to be a link in the video description. I always use it just as a base, and then I start adding more layers to it, just to get the uh, look that I'm going for. Mainly because usually, you no, know, it depends on the model. So here I'm changing uh, the color of some of the X, 
not a lot but just slightly so that they're not exactly the same and I use the ID map for that and then here just I'm just experimenting with some more details I was thinking maybe adding some glow would be cool but I don't think it started I don't think it looked that great so I decided to not go with it like I said, this is a bit of an alien look. And I also added another layer on top here, just so that there's a little, a little bit more variation for the uh, egg itself. Alrighty, so here is what it looks like in Mambo Set 2 back. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, and uh, I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.